Hi everyone, in this video we're going to revise equilibria and we're going to do that through past paper questions. And this past paper question pack can be found using the link in the description below. So the first question, which statement about dynamic equilibrium is not correct? The first one, the catalyst increases the rate of both forward and reverse reactions by the same amount. That one is correct. Dynamic equilibrium exists only in a closed system. That's correct. Concentrations of reactants and products are equal. They remain constant, but they're not equal to each other. And D, the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse. That is true. So the correct answer for the one that's not correct is C. The next one is asking which statements are correct when a catalyst is added to a system in dynamic equilibrium. And the choices are the rates of the forward and reverse reactions increase by the same amount. That is true. The concentrations of reactants and products do not change. That is also true. The value of Kc increases. That's false. A catalyst does not affect the value of Kc. So the correct answer is only 1 and 2, B. Next question, we've got an equation for the production of methanol by reaction of carbon monoxide with hydrogen and it's asking us for the Kc expression. So big K is the equilibrium constant and little c stands for concentration. And the way we write this expression is concentrations of products raised to the power of number of moles times together, if there's more than one product, over concentrations of reactants times together raised to their power of number of moles. So we can see we've only got one mole of carbon monoxide on the reactant side and two moles of hydrogen. So carbon monoxide um, is raised to the power one, but we don't need to write a one, whereas hydrogen is raised to the power two or squared because of the two moles here. Next question, it says the chemist mixes carbon monoxide and hydrogen in a container. The mixture is heated and left to reach equilibrium. And we have equilibrium concentrations of carbon monoxide and hydrogen. It gives us the value for Kc and we have to find the equilibrium concentration of methanol. So we do this by rearrangement. So we can use our Kc expression above, plug in the values. Here's the number for Kc. Concentration of methanol is what we want to find and we can plug in the concentrations for our two reactants and we should come out with 1.4. Then down here it says, what does the numerical value of Kc tell you about the position of equilibrium? So a Kc value of more than one tells us that the position of equilibrium is towards the products or towards the right. If it was less than one, then it would be towards the reactants or towards the left. If it's bang on one, then it's in between the two. Next question, hydrogen can be produced as shown below. Which conditions produce the greatest equilibrium yield of hydrogen? So this equation has a positive delta H that tells us that this reaction is endothermic in the forward direction. That means if we want to shift the equilibrium to the right, then we need to increase the temperature for it to move in the endothermic direction. So that narrows it down to CRD. Then for pressure, we can see everything's in the gas phase. Pressure is only relevant when we have gases. We count the number of gas moles on the left, count the number of gas moles on the right. And if we want to move the reaction to the right, the side with the most gas moles, then we need to decrease the pressure. So the correct answer is D, high temperature and low pressure. Next question, the reaction below is in equilibrium. The equilibrium concentrations are shown below and we have to calculate Kc. So in this case, we just need to write the equilibrium expression or just plug in the numbers raised to the power of the number of moles. So it's products over reactants again and we should come out with 0.054, which is B. We have another reaction here and it wants the Kc expression for it. Products over reactants again raised to the power of the number of moles. Then we have a strange question. It says the equilibrium concentration of chlorine is found to be 0.17. The student calculates the equilibrium concentration of NO to be 0.34. Explain how the student obtained this value for NO. 
So if we look back at this balanced equation, we can see we have twice as much of the NO compared to the chlorine. Therefore, it makes sense that the equilibrium concentration of the NO will be twice as much compared to the chlorine. And last question, at 400 degrees, Kc equals 0 0.015. Calculate the equilibrium concentration of NOCl. And this is just like the previous question where we rearrange to find the unknown. This one is slightly trickier in that we have to remember that there was two moles of this in the balanced equation. So that means that we have to take that into account here when we calculate it. So I've called NOCL x squared. And then when we work out x, that means we have to square root both sides to get rid of this squared. And we should come out with 1.1. Last question. The temperature of an equilibrium mixture is increased above 400 degrees while keeping the pressure constant. State and explain the effect on the equilibrium concentration of nitrogen monoxide with these new conditions. So if we look back at the balanced equation, we can see the reaction is endothermic in the forward direction because we have a positive delta H. So as we increase temperature, the equilibrium position will shift to the right because that forward reaction is endothermic. And this means that the equilibrium concentration of NO will increase because that is on the right.